I just want to check YouTube real quick to make sure that is happening. Okay, cool. All right, and then full screen. All right, awesome. So thank you, everyone, for joining the live Hangout, whether you're here now or in the future. Uh, my special guest today is magician Michael O'Brien. Uh, Michael has been... <laughs> Michael has been performing for over 10 years in uh, Southern California. He's a member of the Academy of Magical Arts at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. His TV appearances and online appearances include KTLA 5, Me Too TV's Cholo's Try, and Got Cranked by Howie Mandel on AGT in 2017. He's the author of The Imagination Project, How to Magish, Easy to Perform Card Miracles, workers, lecture notes, and contributed to the Deceiver's Codex. His DVD is Tour de Force, and he has several um, other products that are available to download digitally on Penguin Magic, Theory 11, and Murphy's Magic. And he is a frequent performer at the Speakeasy with several other projects in the works. So, yeah. Um, before we begin the interview, um, I just want to say, like, if it sounds a little hiccupy, it's... Um, due to my OBS software, and that's why it will be kind of in and out. So hopefully you guys will bear with me until I can monetize on YouTube again by better software, but <laughs> that may be quite a while. But yeah, anyways, how are you doing today, Michael? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for joining me again. So I'm just going to start off with a couple of my questions, um, and then we'll go into Theory 11 because Theory 11 gave me like an entire page full of questions. Like it was crazy. Like the Theory 11 crew like really came through for this. So my first question is, what got you started in Magic? Like what age? I know you've been performing for 10 years already, but like what was the initial spark to cause all of this? So there's a... Okay. I don't think so. see all the stars and there was a magician there but big and uh he worked for him so hard match and it intrigued me because I had not seen that level by the hand for the first match that I'd seen had either been on television like the great match uh or Wow. That's like your signature thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. 
don't know who this guy is. And I picture him in my head. But I don't know who this guy is. So it's kind of one of those kind of like a question, question, but have I not? And I'm sure I'd probably. Oh, that's kind of my that's long deep work version. How I got. That's interesting. So, like, he isn't like a part of like the California magic scene because, like, I know you're part of like, uh, like this group that meets like every week, right? And like, you've never seen him there or at conventions or anything like that. It was just wow, some guy. But I mean, that's kind of important to know. Like, there's a lot of people that are magicians don't really get involved with the magic scene per se and yet they'll still go do street magic it's like those guys can still have the potential to impact someone like completely random and then bring them into the magic scene so that's like a crazy thing i never thought of it that way so yeah that's awesome um so what did you kind of see yourself doing like you mentioned music but like when you were a little kid what did you see yourself doing like at the age you are now uh, I really had a passion for not a weapon teacher. I didn't know what I wanted to teach, but I know maybe I don't know. Uh, that is for me. And I ended up actually going to the military and got some kind of high school teacher that was there after her. Um, I did end up going back to school. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting, like, in a way you did kind of achieve that dream by uh, just bringing magic along to it. Like like you said, you didn't even know, like, what you wanted to teach, and then how you kind of found it. And, like, you basically have made, like, this career out of it, and then it's a career that kind of can build on itself because it's all, like, recorded. And so, like, who knows, like, 50 years from now, who's going to be watching, like, how you are now? And, like, it's just, like, this crazy thing to think about that we're living in like an age where all of this is possible and like we can basically just shoot it from our living room and then you know upload it online and right there like who knows who will see it at that point like it still just blows my mind that that's possible so yeah that's awesome so um do you have a role model in magic do you have someone that you kind of like look up to or you think uh is just someone that you aspire to be like or just someone that really means something to you yeah, so it's hard to say one person. I can give you five hundred. Pretty much the people that I look up to actually finding not but also to ask So I'm very lucky that Magic County is such a tight community that Monday night jam, we actually start to uh, me, myself, uh, my good friend Jeremy Griffith, my good friend David Monty, my good friend Alex Longford, and Dan Jeffrey. We were kind of like the first five people who started making regular 
<laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of put you on the spot with that one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's that's so cool because we have this thing in Michigan. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Abbott's Magic Get Together. It's like this big thing. Like, okay. it's a weekend in the summer in like this little tiny farm town in Michigan, like super small. Becomes like it. I can honestly claim it has more magicians in that tiny little town than what Vegas has during that okay. little weekend that we have going on you have like all these big names like there's been Bonacek, uh kaylin and ginger um who i mean copperfield went there when he was a kid they've had matt king like all the big names have gone to this uh get together and but like the big names like they're actually pretty cool to hang out with like they you know they just kind of treat you like an equal and like you know, to magicians, like, there are celebrities, like, other people. Like, if I went on the street and was like, do you know who, I don't know, like, Darcy Oak is, they'll probably say no. But, like, to the magicians, they're like, oh, yeah, the guy from Britain's Got Talent, and he's with The Illusionist, and Kevin James, and all that. Like, yeah. yeah. So, which brings me to another thing, is I've been trying to push the uh, magic shop owner that puts this thing together. Like, gotta get Michael O'Brien from California to do a lecture. Because, like, we just invite, like, tons of people all over to do lectures. Like, we have an illusionist. We have a close-up guy. And it's just all these different level of performers. I'm like, got to get this Michael O'Brien guy. <laughs> so I've been pushing for it. So maybe one day you will receive an email saying, hey, can we fly out to Michigan for a summer? Well, for a weekend in the summer. And then, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Have you ever been to Michigan? I haven't. Yeah, for sure. I'll tr I'm working to try and make it happen because I think that would be <laughs> awesome. Um, so there's like a ton of questions that came in. So I'm probably only going to ask like one more of mine, then we'll move into other people's questions just so we can get through them all. The last one that I have for you is pretty soon I'm going to be doing this series on my YouTube channel uh, called Indie Versus. That's just like a temporary name. I haven't really put out the actual name yet. And I got to thinking, like, you look at the film industry and you look at indie films and they're held in this high regard to where they're, like, better than mainstream films. Or if you look at video games, like, indie games kind of had, like, this renaissance to where they were more celebrated than the AAA games in indie music. Like, it kind of started, like, this hipster thing. And Magic is the only one where it's, like, indie material isn't really there yet it's not like held in this high regard like in other entertainment forms so i'm gonna try and like kick off this series called indie versus where we take like an effect say like dive by david kohler and pin it up against like evolve by nicholas lawrence and we hold them both up for criticism and kind of show like indie magic still holds its own against like these like big name publishers and can sometimes even surpass it in some people's opinions. So my question to you is what do you see the state of the indie magic scene is as like right now? Like how, how do you kind of view it and where do you, where would you like to see it go in the future? 
Oh, uh, I think we lost Michael. Let's see, am I still streaming? Let me check how it's going on my end. Oh, yep. Okay. Do I still have you? Yeah, you're back. All right. Um. Okay. So we're getting some audio issues because I just checked the comments. Uh, yeah. Like I said, guys, that's just because of the OBS. Like I think your audio is coming in clearly. So maybe if you could clear that up a little bit. Um, and maybe just tell it like they're having a hard time with mine. It's just the OBS software is what it is. Yeah, they can hear you. Yeah, they can hear you. It's just the OBS software. Yeah, sure. So basically, how do you see the state of the indie magic scene today, and where would you like to see it go into the future? So uh, one thing that I'm trying to right now is here's the magic product. I've been doing my best to push magic product. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I kind of hope that, like, you kind of mentioned, like, if you put this out there, it, like, no longer goes in the limelight. I'm kind of honestly predicting, though, that one day it will have, like, this kind of hipster magician, even though there's already, like, that term thrown around. But, like, a magician that doesn't want to buy something safe that was produced by, like, illusionists or whatever. And then it's like, no, I'd rather go to Theory 11's marketplace and buy something that no one else is using and just yeah. wants to be like this hipster guy that buys all this material that no one knows about. That's kind of what I see happening. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd like to see more of that movement grow and like kind of like a hipster magician movement that isn't just like people that are hipster dressed, but like that hipster mindset of, Oh, I want to go and buy this like obscure thing on Penguin or this obscure thing in 311's marketplace and be like one of only like five people that actually performs this or even knows how to perform it or something like that. So that's kind of what I see it going. But yeah, and like another thing that you brought up that was interesting is like some people always like have this like negative connotation when you like put a price tag with your releases, but it's like we put like our lives into this stuff, you know? And like you and I are both kind of like still indie creators. And like, I, 
I mean, I may be a bit biased, but I think we price it pretty fair. You know, it's not like too much to ask for. And it's like, we like, I know you and I both like audience test what we're going to do. And a lot of like the big companies don't even do that. Like they don't audience test the material before they put it out. So yeah, I, I just, that's one of the things I don't get is like, like I get like the belief that art should be free and available to anyone. And that's great. But if only everything else was free and available to anyone, that would work. Like, say if I could just get food for free or free rent or free health care or free whatever, then I'll put everything out for free. I'll work for free. But unfortunately, in order to survive, I need to have that monetary compensation. So, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I hope more and more people realize, like, why we have to charge for that in the future. But all right. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, oh man. Let's see. Lost him for a second. I'm just gonna check in while he unfreezes. See how the comments are doing. How many people do we have currently? Okay. People watching. Okay, you're back. Cool. Uh lost you there for a second. Alright, so this first one we're gonna go through Reddit first because I only got one comment it wasn't really a question but it was um from an account called tanner evil i'm not sure if you're familiar with anyone that goes by tanner evil okay he said i enjoy his work i don't have any questions but have fun with the interview so he wishes you the best there so that was from tanner um all right so moving on to theory 11 questions and i'm just kind of going to go in the order that people submitted them in the first one comes from gabriel zudek I don't know if I'm saying the last name right. I apologize for all the mispronunciations. I'm terrible with that. Um, his question to you is, when does card magic or magic in general start becoming too technical or complicated? Too technical or complicated. So this is a gray area. But for me, if I can put it down, I would say this Say you're not very good at math, and you're for me. All right, cool. Trick right now. Card back off. You have to look down. How do you get it? Bad thing now. Look at that because you're basically odd. Oh yeah, for sure. Good answer. All right. Um, this next question. So there's actually two questions. And the first one we have to be careful with. It comes from uh, Andrew Letts, um, known as uh, Dominus Delorum on 311. This first question, I, I'm going to be like really careful with this. He said, Tyler discussed an idea with me yesterday that I thought was brilliant. I won't say anything here, but if he has discussed it with you as well, what are your thoughts on it? And what he's referring to is, we'll just say the name. We won't say what it is. Um, the creators project that I pitched to you. Um, I don't really want to put like the horse or like, excuse me, the cart too far in front of the horse because 
like say if we announce that we're going to do this and we don't follow through on it, it's going to be eggs on like all of our faces. So like I don't want to like say what this is until like we have it like 100% sure we're going to do it. So, but I think he's just asking like your thoughts on it without like giving away too much. Without giving it away. All right. So my thoughts on it. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> but look forward to it. <laughs> so I guess uh, we're back. Other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think like something like this has been done before. I mean, there's been like, I mean, people are probably guessing it's a collaboration. Like, there's been collaboration DVDs, but not with like this idea. So I, I think it's a first, actually. So yeah. So I think he was kind of looking for like, are you on board with it? And so yeah. So we got Michael O'Brien on board for it. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, he had a second question that said, is there a genre of magic that you feel is underused and deserves a resurgence, like rope magic or linking rings? I mentioned the rings because your linking ring routine is awesome and has a personal touch. Well, first of all, thank you for that earlier. I'm kind of biased. So, um, anything that's a classic, I would say, that's under you, say, the problem I have with classic magic is that it's So, what they need to do is find some kind of kind of classic magic that can connect with audience perfectly. So, perfect example, um, I just I love it. It's, it's amazing. Like an hour. But um, check it out. Uh, the last one I actually did was called Sonic Mind And uh, basically, I just like the mind reading effect. It's been done a bazillion times. And I turned it into something where I had it. My passion is doctor. So I, I added in the Sonic subscriber element. I think a lot a lot of magic kind of that like take the class a lot add some kind of flavor to my next step question. And then um, you know, like with mantra for example. I can put the mantra piece in the uh, just because I know it's going to be a card deck. I wanted it in a card deck. Then I realized, like, crap, right. I love the mantra. So it connects to them, too. So um, when I'm doing the card deck, I get to put the regular deck of cards, you get good reactions. Like, I don't even have to think I can take the cards out, and they're already in the game. Tell me a card trick. I can't think of another card trick. Never. So, so. <laughs> in fact, some people actually go to sleep sometimes when I take out a deck of cards. <laughs> That's 
great answer. Um, May Sasan asks, what are your favorite effects and routines? And he also feels terrible about what YouTube has done to your channel and wants to express his condolences for it. <laughs> Even though, like, I, we should probably clear something up. Yeah. It, it was never about the money. Yeah. Like, like a lot of people are, like, saying, oh, it's about the money for you guys. It's like, no, we just want to be able to upload videos past 15 minutes. Like, come on. That's all we want. For those of you who really think about the money, but not how much it pays, less than $40. So it's less than money. <laughs> yeah. That's it's awesome. All, been around for like, but um, yeah, like I like the I like the audience and the audience. That's very interactive. I like the like um, both fun parts and parts. And um, my favorite. That is also available on your website to purchase, right? To learn how to do that? Soon. Oh, okay, soon. soon. Got you. Yeah, yeah. I, I have enough. Mm. So as soon as I get the product, the only reason I get the product is because Matt and Garrett is actually working on a project right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah for sure um oh <laughs> I, I i had to include this so i think this guy is like a fan of yours he his uh account name is pro amma i think he went by like grant c his question to you is lol o'brien really <laughs> So that was his question to you, is just, LOL, O'Brien? Really? Like, I think he's just so astounded that you would do this show. Like, I think he's just such a big fan. Like, can't believe that you're coming to this, like, little YouTube channel to do this interview. <laughs> he's just stunned. So I, I don't even know how you can answer that question. <laughs> All right, moving on, moving on. <laughs> oh, moving on to, like, a lot. So Chris JGJ actually submitted four questions, but they're relatively short, so it's not too big of a problem. His first question is, how do you make magic meaningful, and what is your approach? I mean, you kind of answered that, this already, so maybe if you want to give, like, a condensed answer again. Where is the answer? I think how to make magic meaningful. One, you can make it you can easily put your work. Um, there are, you know, I'll be honest with you, I would say that if you learn a magic trick, Crazy reason, and ask why. Crazy thing, that's the fact that the French accent, because I was trying to, I was trying to, so, you know, try to 
find the style that's the they, they say that your and we can talk about the passion about I talk about my wife, I talk about my daughter, I talk about my son, like So those Your audience. Awesome. Um, his second question is Can magic be both meaningful and comedic? Meaningful and comedic? Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff he does is hilarious, but yeah, I would... yeah. So I actually just had an idea as I was um, listening to that, and that. So I'm going to kind of just take a quick detour from his question: Is have you ever thought about taking video of you performing like the Pokemon routine and like sending that to like the Pokemon company or Nintendo and like showing them, hey, like. Maybe we can do like a partnership here, and I don't know. Like, have you ever tried to like push that to the creators of that series at all? I haven't. That actually sounds like something that would be a good idea. I might. Um, yeah, no, I can say I haven't, but no. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, you need to do it, man. You never know where it will go. Like, they might really dig it, and especially. Like, if they see you performing for, like, all these, like, 20 to 30-year-olds, like, yeah, I think they'll dig it, for sure. <laughs> for so, sure. Um, his third question is, in one word, so he kind of gave you a challenge, in one word, what is the current state of magic? Awesome. Oh, there we go. This isn't too bad. Uh, that one I would have struggled with. <laughs> um, okay, so number four. Now, this one, he's, like, going right at you, so be ready for this one. All right, and this is verbatim when he said, personally, I think magic slash performance theory shouldn't be sold on the marketplace or anywhere for that matter. A theory is just one person's opinion slash conclusions based on incomplete information. It isn't a truth, nor would it necessarily help another performer become better. It is simply just advice and should be offered for free or kept to oneself. The only way to become a better performer is to actually perform. Disagree? Question mark. I do disagree a lot <laughs> with that. And I don't want to, I don't have to try not to. Um, let's talk about other things. There's a theory, like I have a lunch about this. I have a theory about the tension. Uh, uh, the tension of the action. There is that. First, the theory that Of evidence, facts, 
Yeah, sure. So he's kind of going about like it shouldn't belong on the marketplace. Um, the only way, or I'll go back even a little bit further. Uh, basically, it's your own opinion conclusions, which I think you already answered. Um, it is simply just advice and should be offered for free or kept to oneself. Do you want me to read the rest of it? No, I okay. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Actually, something he said that kind of interested me that I kind of can't really agree with is he said it doesn't belong anywhere on, like, the marketplace. And maybe Theory 11, like, I'm not quite sure what their feelings about theory is. But here's the thing. Like, if something's on the marketplace and you don't like it, just don't buy it. Like, what doesn't work for you might work for someone else. And you shouldn't, like, limit, like other people's potential to buy something that they may need just because you don't like something. So I think like just completely banning theory outright just because you don't agree with it, like probably isn't the best idea. But um, yeah, there's like one other thing that he kind of brought up, but oh uh, yeah, the only way to become a better performer is to actually perform. Yeah, I agree with that to an extent, but here's the thing. Um, like, my other passion is filmmaking, right? And I watched this guy on YouTube called Nerdwriter1, and he talks about, like, why Zack Snyder films aren't good. Why they're visually very beautiful, but story-wise they're bad. It's because he doesn't do scenes versus moments. And what that means is, like, 
he'll just show like these beautiful visuals, but there's no reason that he gives you like he doesn't build the world, he doesn't build the characters, and it's just like oh, Superman's gonna just like blow up the city or whatever, but you don't care because you don't care about the city. Like there was nothing to get you involved with it, and that's kind of how I see like theory in performances. Like, with the scenes versus moments, like, the moment is a gun. Like, a gun firing and you get a bang. Like, you get that quick bang. But in order to have impact, you have to put a bullet in that gun in order for it to leave an impact. And, like, that's how a magic performance is. Yeah, you can have, like, a woman sawed in half and, like, that's a bang. Like, that's a flashy visual. But without having the audience care about that woman's, uh, you know, health or whatever, without putting that bullet in the gun you're not going to leave an impact. So that's kind of like how I feel about it. Like, that's why you need theory as well as like actual performance um, experience. So yeah, that is a really interesting question because I, I guess it's kind of a hot topic, I suppose, to debate on. Really cool. Um, Al E. Cat Dabra um, asks, how, does, uh, how do you approach guests at an event that you are working at and what are your opening lines to them? Do you introduce yourself verbally and say you are a magician? Very good question. Um, I try to keep it short. It's actually something that is uh, um, The approach. Uh, yeah, the approach. That's, that's One of my favorites. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so last set of questions. Zach F. submitted two of them. His first one is, what opportunities have you had because of magic that you may not have had otherwise? So the first one, um, I got to go on American Talent. Um, I got to go on but, Next uh, year. <laughs> Uh, I got to do a 
I've made a lot of friends. Yeah, that was a good question. Um, his second one is, what effects slash tricks do you like but don't perform? Of these tricks, do you want to perform them at some point? Um, I think the number one that I want to explain to her, I have not heard of the talking about stage magic. Like Jeff McBride. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um hard people like I love watching hard Um two for the the two hard two hard hard are just right mass also uh is uh physical Yeah, that's something that, like, I think I tried it, like, maybe, like, two years ago, and I, like, did the backhand, I was able to, like, fool my grandmother, but I just didn't really go anywhere with it, and then I saw, like, Dan Sperry's show, not live, just online, and I'm like, oh, man, like, this is something I need to get into, and, like, Jeff McBride just shooting cars at his audience, I'm like, that is awesome, but, yeah, all right, I'll just have, like, a few other ones, and then we'll wrap it up, so, um, oh, yeah, this one. This is something that I really am curious about is how do you balance being a husband and a father with your magic? Um, honestly, anytime to I just point at your head magic is <laughs> probably a wise decision. I'm very blessed to be I think that if you are to have that support in your family, you want to be successful with what you're doing. But at the same time, you also have to find that balance when you make that Right. You have to find that um, the reason it's worked out so well is have that And that being very important, me doing my best. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like that compromise on like both ends that kind of just makes it work and that's like the balance of life. Interesting. Um 
what is your biggest regret in Madden? And you don't have to answer that one if you don't want to. Like I said, it's during the um, I guess my ultimate regret. It's not even really a regret. I guess my real regret is not like uh, uh, like I said, I can't just can't multiple people because I want to talk to people. And and um, that was like that was my happy. And so. I would have just stuck out and I'm like starting to change now without that like eight year gap of not playing I think I'd be better with the now. But I can't really fault that because like I said, it's a good experience. That'd probably be my only regret. Yeah, that I know, like I didn't start magic until I was twenty. So like <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I'm such a late bloomer, but <laughs> I mean, it's just like one of those things that there isn't really a time where it's too late to start. You can pick it up anytime. That's like one of the beautiful things about that, I think. Even even in the forum right here, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all the more power to them. Like, I'm sure, like, they'll be a. I'm sure that they're going to be glad that they started rather than not starting it. Yeah. So. Yeah, all right, so my last question for you, and like you can keep it as secretive as you want or whatever, but just what are your future plans? I'm going to link all of your information, like where they can contact you, like your website. Oh, before I get into my last question, would you prefer that people buy your products through your own website or through other means? Like what, what do you kind of prefer? I prefer that you purchase my products Already have a Tier Eleven account. My account is set up in the marketplace. You can look at that. You already have a Magic account. Products that I put out there. Magic again. That whatever works best for you. Um, I make the most money. I don't have to pay anybody else. Um, so if you my website, more power. I appreciate you purchasing my product no matter where what's all right cool so yeah uh what are your future plans that you feel comfortable with sharing all right so I have my set So, um, one of the projects is how to use the tool. Um, for those of you who haven't heard of how to use the tool, it's basically a, a collection of ideas that I've developed throughout my years of magic. And it covers three important magic um, It covers marketing and advertising. So, I kind of give you a map there, how to do stuff, and then the actual side of magic. It's a great book for anybody who doesn't want to do magic professionally. Uh, the theory and the ideas behind it, and the marketing and the public and all that. Um, how to do fishing? All you do is you can see how to do fishing. Comes off with even more ideas. Um, another project that we're working right now is the uh, download that I'm doing. Pocket takes advantage of the tools that I collect from the pocket and switch. Uh, if you guys want to learn the tools, you can try it in the back of the channel. Or you can pick up the January copy. It's either January or February. Actually. Um, but uh, there's an article in there that goes through the tools and actually gives you some tips and tricks. Um, the two tricks that I like to use that are the font. Um, projects that you can do 
very So that's another project. Um, the project that I'm currently working on right now is my first brain project. I think we have a name for it. Yes! That's the one I was advocating for. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> My suggestion, like, have you talked to Murphy's about that? Because usually they have the kind of wallet to buy in bulk and get it at those nice prices. And I don't know, maybe talk to Murphy's and maybe Murphy's can work out something with you. Yeah, and if anything, like, I'm first. 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 I
Wow. That's amazing. Mm. That's that's amazing. Yeah. All right. So do you have any closing thoughts for us and then we'll end the stream? It's been my honor. <laughs> Was it Alan Watts? I, I don't know exactly. I'm sure, I'm sure a couple of them had to do But whatever you're doing with your person, that you can stop getting engaged. But you have a Like my wife. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, sir. It's been a pleasure having you on, and I wish you the most success possible. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, guys.